All right, so I'm going to show how to open up and disassemble this Lenovo um, T490. Okay, so first what you want to do is um, undo all the screws from the bottom. Um, if you're wondering what this little hole is for, this is a battery reset hole. Um, so for that, you'll need like a, um, a needle or some really thin tool, and then you'll just put poke the needle in there and then press and hold it for a few seconds. And that should do like a battery reset, kind of like a BIOS CMOS reset. Um, anyways, um, this can sometimes be useful if the computer is having issues turning on or if for some reason it doesn't show like it's charging or it's completely dead. Um, so sometimes that can help. Anyways, um, to open up the computer, just undo all the screws. You'll need a PH1 and there's one, two, three, four, five, six. All right. Once you undo those six screws, you'll just have to go around. Um, I don't think you have to remove this. Nope, it doesn't come out. So, but anyways, you go around. There's a little gap between the bottom cover and the top um, uh, palm rest trackpad case. Um, so you just go around with your fingernails or a pry tool, just like this. Okay. If you notice, it kind of popped up a little bit. Um, and you just keep going all the way around. All right. Make sure to be careful around the little ports and the fan connectors, or the fan um, grate. Alright, just like that. Keep going around. If you get stuck somewhere, you can go to the other side. Alright, sometimes the screw didn't come out all the way or it uh, went lock latched back in, so you might have to go back in as well and then redo the screw. But yeah, just keep going all the way around, just like this. Alright. Okay. All right. I cut my nails a bit. They're a little bit too short now, so I kind of regret it. It's making this harder. Um, but yeah, so basically just go all the way around. All right, you can see the covers coming up. The front piece, I believe you're not supposed to pull up. Um, it will, it should come up uh, once you release all the other clips, okay? So again, these little parts that are in between the ports are the tricky parts um, because you can't really get your fingernails or pry tools in there as easily. You kind of have to push up on the case like I'm doing with my thumb and then you can kind of get your finger in there. If you can't, let me see if I can do this with the pry tool. Okay, so yeah, so the pry tool reaches. Okay, so just like that. Once you get around to the bottom, let's see if you have to pry it or it should. Usually it will just come up that the clips are here. So let's see here. Okay, kind of wobble it. There we go. And now it came out. Okay, so there we go. Here you can see inside the computer. So as you can see, there's a little slot here, but nothing's connected. I'm not sure what this is for. I think it's for a network card. Um, yeah, but there's no, there's supposed to be like little antennas that go here, but for this model it doesn't have that. So let's see where, okay, so there's a built-in wireless card here. It's part of the board. Um, just like every other wireless card to take the antennas out, you pull up from the tail, it'll pop off, and then I put it back just to make sure it lines up and then push it down. You got the speaker bar here to remove that. You just grab the wings and you just wiggle it, um, and then eventually it will pop out just like that, okay? Um, since this board has this little BIOS battery, um, uh, that little button that you press through the case, it should reset that, so you shouldn't have to replace, um, to take this battery out, but on some models you will have to. Um, and one thing to mention, um, if you're new to doing any of this, just to be safe, you want to disconnect the battery first. So to disconnect the battery, if you can, grab the little, um, wings of the connector. Um, I try not to use these little pull tabs because they usually end up um, breaking or not working well. So I try and use the plastic parts and I kind of just wiggle the connector. Um, this one, the plastic parts don't stick out too well, but the connector does come out slowly, see? So you just keep wiggling it and eventually it will pop out just like that. Okay, after you do that, um, I'll recommend pressing and holding the power button. Um, so hold it for about 15 seconds just to drain any power in the circuits. Um, that way, if you do end up touching some metal piece and um, crossing the connections, it won't get damaged. All right. 
So there you go. Um, so the main thing that's required for is if you undo like the LCD cables like these, um, this LCD connector to remove it, there's this metal latch, you just flip it up. So there's this little metal piece. Once you flip it up, you can just pull the connector out. So just like this, just grab it and then you can kind of wiggle it and pull it out. All right, to put it back, just make sure you have it lined up properly, pull it all the way and then put that latch back down. All right, so speaker connector, I believe I showed. These two connectors for the motherboard, you kind of just pull this piece up. So you pop it up just like that and it will come out. Same thing with the other side. You got the other connector here for, I think this is the LCD connector and this is like for the webcam and microphone setup. Then you got this here. It looks like that's for the power button. So if the power button breaks, you can replace that board just by itself. All right. This board with the Ethernet port seems to be its own separate board as well, connected with this cable. Okay, so if you need to replace that, you can. Then you got this USB port here also on its own board. So if you damage this, you can replace that as well. This is a very nice build. It looks like um, if any pieces break, it's very easy to swap it out. All right, you got the CPU, the processor. It's soldered down to this um, underneath the heatsink. All right, so I'm taking out the battery now. It looks like there's only four screws holding it in place. So let's take those out. Okay, so this computer wasn't turning on, so let's see what's going on. Okay, <clears throat> so we got the battery out. So the battery, if you need to replace it, the model number is here. Um, hopefully you can read that. If not, it's L18M3P73. Okay, there's other model numbers here if you can't find that. So oops, hopefully that will be useful. Okay, so there we go. You can see the fingerprint sensor is here. It connects to this board, um, this slot here. And then you got the uh, trackpad connector here. And you got this connector here. I don't know what this is for. Um, it doesn't, is it an LED? I don't think that's an LED, is it? No. Yeah, I don't know what this little connector is for. If somebody knows, just let me know. Um, I don't know, maybe like an NFC or something. Um, but yeah, so these connectors to remove them, you just flip up these little tabs that are holding it down and then you can pull the cable out just like this and then you can put it back in. Okay. All right, so line this up. All right, make sure it's in and then just latch that back down. All right, again, you got the CMOS battery here. It comes out just like the speaker cable. You just grab it with your fingers and then wiggle to pull it out. Um, on most uh, other models without the reset button, you will have to like short this with a piece of metal. Once you pull this out, just wiggle that out. Take like a screwdriver or something and then just touch the two pins. If you do this, make sure you don't touch any other pieces here, but you basically do that. And that should drain any power from the... Um, the BIOS or the real-time clock circuit and then it will reset the BIOS uh, back to factory okay um, this doesn't work if it's like a BIOS lock or something but um, yeah so we got a stick of RAM here um, there's no RAM in it but this is for a DDR4 um, stick of memory okay um, I don't know I don't think there's a second stick of RAM on here because the board is so thin um, so most likely the, the RAM is actually soldered onto the other side of the board. Um, then you got a M.2 drive here. This is, let's see, does it say? They don't specify here. PSID. Okay, it is PCIe. So this is a M.2 uh, PCIe NVMe SSD. So if you wanted to upgrade it, you can. Um, you basically just undo the one screw it'll pop up slightly or this one actually it's staying in place but uh, you lift it up slightly if it doesn't pop up and then you can just wiggle and pull it out okay so that's how you would replace the SSD okay so we're gonna put that back in put the screw back in place all right it looks like all the other ports here are soldered to the board there's a metal plate on top um, and then what else here? You got the USB-C port is also soldered to the board. So if something happens to the charge port, then I don't know how you're going to fix that. You'd have to replace the board or you'd have to pay someone that, that can do, um, that kind of board work. Um, so that's kind of more tricky technical work. All right. Um, so that's pretty much all there is to this. 
hopefully this video helped you. Um, one other thing, this computer seems to have a keyboard, I believe that's a keyboard drain hole. So if you do somehow spill liquid into your keyboard, you don't want to flip this computer all upside down and everything because this drain hole here, it lines up with this raised um, drain hole here. So when the liquid spills in, it will um, fill this and then it'll um, drip leak out the bottom. Um, but if you flip it upside down, the liquid can go over this drain hole and then back out into the computer. So if you spill liquid just in the keyboard, it's okay. Um, just let it drain on its own. You don't want to flip the computer all over the place. Okay, um, worst case on this model, it looks like you just have to um, replace the keyboard, which the keyboard looks replaceable. Um, I don't see where the screws are. I'm thinking it's like a glued in place model. Um, either that or it has some tabs, but um, I'm going to put the battery back in and we're going to see if it powers back up. Okay, so let's put that back in place. Put the screws. Hopefully after resetting the BIOS battery and everything, this computer will just start up and then we should be good to go. Okay. Let's plug this back in. All right, reconnect that. Let's put this cover back on. This does have like a cover um, removal detection switch here. So if you don't have the cover on, it might not actually start up. So make sure before starting it up, you put the cover back on. And I believe this cover, um, to put it back, you kind of have to put the bottom half in first. Since it only has the two screws, the other ones are being held in place with clips. Okay. So let's see here. Actually, I think it doesn't matter. Let's try. Will it clip down? Nope, it doesn't clip down. So I think you do have to put this side at a weird angle first. Okay. I usually like to twist the screw backwards first to make sure it's going in place. Let's see here. It looks like the front piece isn't going in properly, so I'm gonna have to take a look at what's going on. Uh, let's see. So let's lift this up. Oh yeah, you do have to, okay, just snap it by hand first, just like that, okay. Once you do that, you can get the screws in, okay. All right, that screw's already in. Looks like this whole case you have to manually snap back in place, all right. Just like how you had to pop it out, okay. Pop it all back in place. Tighten up the screws. On some models, um, after you disconnect the battery and everything, it might not turn in turn on until you plug it in. So make sure to check that as well. If your laptop's having some issue after taking everything apart, you always want to try plugging it back in. So before the charge light wouldn't turn on, let's see what's going on right now. So we've got this. Okay, here you can see there's a little light here. Plug in. Okay, the light is coming on. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, there you go. So the light is coming on. So that's an improvement. It wasn't doing that before. Now let's make sure. Okay, make sure you snapped in all the, oops, snapped in all the clips because here it's not snapped in as you can see. So just make sure when you do that to check all around. Snap everything back in. Okay, looks good. Oh, looks like it's turning itself on. Okay, so it said check the date and time. All right, so it is turning on. The keyboard lights are coming up and there's the Lenovo screen. Okay, so it looks like it's working. It's good to go. Just have to reset up the date and time. But yeah, hopefully this video helped you. If it did, please like and subscribe. Let me see the keyboard. The keyboard is tricky. Um, to find out the keyboard thing, um, I'm not going to show it in a video, but usually what I do 
If I need to replace it, I'll look for the part online. Once I find the part, I'll look at both sides of the part if I can, and that will usually tell me if there's screws in the back or certain clips anywhere. Um, but that's kind of the trick. Hopefully, um, uh, if you guys are watching this, um, you can kind of not just use this as a follow along guide, but also as um, a way to kind of learn um, that uh, you can figure things out, even though like, you don't have someone showing you how to do it. So like with the keyboard and other parts, if you can't figure out how to remove it, look for a picture online, look how the part um, is possibly held in place. And those kinds of things can help you with pretty much anything you work on. Um, all right, so anyways, hopefully this video helped. If it did, please like and subscribe so it can help others find this video. And thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.